Welcome to the next part of the Built Bottom End Performance Drag Car Saga where we'll be covering all the work required to turn the Camaro Eddy into a dedicated track piece. In this part of the engine building series we'll be looking at how to destroy replace worn cam bearings in my early 5.3 LS. For the installation I used a cheapo bearing installation kit that utilizes a collet style bushing instead of the solid type for specific bearing sizes that you'll see in more expensive kits. Aside from my one foobar, which was more operator error than anything, the cheapo kit worked just fine. To use this style of kit, simply assemble the rod into whatever length you need to reach the bearing being installed, and then thread the collet onto the end. It's time for me to tell you about Built Bottom End Performance Parts and Tools. From AN fittings to V-bands to ring compressors, Built Bottom End Performance has you covered. You can find them on the website, eBay, and on Amazon where you can take advantage of free Prime shipping if you're a Prime member. So on stock bearings, you can tell if they're bad by that gold stripe inside there. I originally took the block to the machine shop um, just for cleaning and a checkout because it was in a vehicle, it was in an accident, so I wanted to make sure that it was not hurt in any way, there's no cracks or anything. Um, and I completely neglected to look at the cam bearings and then I got it back and it was all cleaned up and I could, I could clearly see the damage. So um, unfortunately I didn't, wasn't able to have them do it. Um, they're a little ways away from me so I didn't want to make the drive. I figured it was a job I could do myself. But uh, yeah, you can see pretty, pretty bad. So definitely time for replacement. So we're going to look at a couple of different cam bearings here. And I originally ordered this part number for my 2001 5.3 and discovered that these were incorrect. They would not fit. So after a little bit more looking, I figured out what the issue was and ordered the correct part number, which was this one. And um, as I was pushing those in, number four went in kind of crooked and kind of buckled on me. I don't think that'll buff out, so I had to go searching for another kit, but as luck would have it, they, the Clevite bearings are on a national back order as of right now, and I was completely unable to get my hands on any online. So I got lucky, and my local engine machine shop here in Colorado, Western Engine Supply, came through, and they had some sitting on the shelf, so I was able to get my hands on some same day. Um, so if you, if you ever need machining services or parts in Colorado Western Engine Supply is the place to go. The guy at the front desk there, I think his name is Mike, he even called up the, uh, he called me the next day and checked in to see if these worked out for me. So that was much appreciated. So check them out if you need uh, machining or parts in Colorado. But anyway, um, so these are the wrong part number that I ordered. So this one is for number three, the middle bearing and the outer diameter comes out to 2.312 and the correct part number comes out to 3.17 so only about five thou difference but when we move up to the uh, inner uh, outside of the middle so two and four the incorrect part number is 2.339 and on the correct bearing you can see it's 2.321 so uh, more than 10 thousands bigger, so this would not press in. Um, and then the outer ones, so number one and five, the correct bearing is 2.333. And the incorrect one comes out to two inches and 355 thousandths. So you can tell they're, they're definitely off. Um, 335 and then Five, five, so about 20 thou off. Um, and then you can also see a difference, very big difference in the oil hole. And it's considerably larger, so I'm not sure what effect that would have had on uh, it, the oil pressure, if that would have had any effect at all, but just a notable difference. You can also see that there's a pretty considerable difference in width. The correct bearings come out to about 625 thousandths and the incorrect bearings are all the way up to about 770. So um, I don't know how much of a difference that would have made, but it was pretty obvious by comparing the new ones to the old ones that they were 
uh, something was fishy, so I investigated a little further and found the diameter difference as well. Well, enough gum flapping, let's get on with the install. First, we have to get the engine off the stand so we can access the rear side of the cam board to press in the forwardmost bearings. My wife's boyfriend wasn't here to help lift, so I had to use the engine hoist. It's fairly easy to remove the old bearings. Just feed the rod through the block and start the collet onto the end of it, leaving it loose so it can slide into the bearing. And make sure the alignment cone is securely in place so the tool runs true to the cam bore and then just start tapping them out. Try to position yourself such that you have as large of a distance between the alignment cone and the bearing being pushed out as possible. This ensures the tool isn't crooked with respect to the cam board. You'll see where this bites me later in the video. Then once the old bearings are out, we can start to carefully install the new ones. Slip the bearing on and tighten the collet down. Or if you're using the solid bushing type, simply slip the bearing onto the bushing. Then there's an oil passage in the block that you have to line up with one of the holes in the bearings. Work from the center outwards while pressing them in. Again, try to maximize the distance between the bearing you're working on and the alignment cone, especially while pressing them in. Then use a pick to check the alignment of the oil hole with the passage in the block. Here's what I'm talking about when I say try to maximize the distance between the cone and the bearing being worked on. I'm only working with the distance from the first to the second bearing here where I'd ideally be coming in from bearing number five on the right side of the screen. I had trouble getting the bearing to start from that direction though, so rather than keep pushing and damage the bearing, I took a chance and tried from the bearing one side of the engine, which worked out on this one. And then here's when things went tits up. You can see the alignment cone lose its seat and the tool went crooked. <laughs> Warts and all. Thanks for watching, be kind, and remember, not everything's black and white.